Hello, hello, hello everyone. This is Disgruntled Elk back with another Hammer Time video. Gonna run through a league today, nothing crazy, but wanted to go over some small changes. We're just trying out. Um, so right now I'm on the six fetches or seven fetches to Seacrum Coast. I think it's fine. Um, I'm down to one Memnite higher on the Ornithopters because you kind of beat Murktide most of the time anyway. And then Ornithopter is much better in the mirror match. And then in some matchups like Yogg, it's a little bit better against. Um, but the evasion and the two toughness is usually a little bit. Uh, I'm trying two blacksmith skills in the main. Um, trimmed one of the Steel Shaper's gifts, which is fine. It's one of those things where these are kind of all flex spots and you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, if you're expecting a little more react reactivity, more answers, then playing a little more blacksmith skills is correct because that way it's at least not a dead card. Um, if you're going into a completely blind meta or something a lot more proactive, then I would recommend more Steel Shaper's gifts. Beyond that, we've also tweaked the sideboard. So we made, uh, made a little bit more room. So we have the, the full set of skills completely still. Um, we have the one needle, two peers. I still like this those numbers. Um, we're playing the four Hushbringers still because tribal decks are weirdly picking up a little bit. And of course it's insane against the four color decks. Huge fan of his uh, Lavinia, of course. You know, I love my girl. And then Meddling Mage is kind of our third Lavinia. Uh, Teferi I've liked because it doubles as kind of a, another hate bear effect against things like Living End because obviously they can't cascade with it in play. But also it uh, doubles as answers to blue-white control or potentially Eldrazi Tron on Chalice of the Void. So I don't hate one. Um, I probably wouldn't go up to two. I've tried two and it's fine, but it's a little clunky. So I like, I like, um, March of Otherworldly Light. Card's great. This is another card I would consider potentially going up to a third copy of given the right circumstance. But I think for right now, this is it's kind of where I'm at. Just kind of trying, you know, slightly different things out and kind of going from there. But yeah, other than that, nothing too crazy. And I'll see y'all in the first match. All right, and here we are for round one. Let's see how things go. All right. So we have a white source, Esper Sentinel on the play into Stoneforge Mystic. We don't have an equipper, but we do have the Saga and a lot of... I'm going to go ahead. And I think I will actually go get a, uh, a Hollowed Fountain here because there is a world in which we want to go get Reality Chip. And, you know, sometimes you trust your gut, hope they aren't on Blood Moon, and kind of go from there. Cool. All right. Opponent is on the Malta 6. Kind of go from there. Fetching a Hollowed Fountain can also signal to your opponent that you do have the main deck Spell Pierce, which... Of course we don't, but they don't know that. I can do what I want. I'm an individual that plays net decks. It's a tangled web we weave. Basic forest, not really. Okay, well at least we draw a card off the Utopia Sprawl. So I was like, oh, they're, they're not on Blood Moon and then immediately get punished with a Blood Moon. But at least we drew a basic, okay, white. Um, so totally realistic that it is a, um, a four color deck, but there's no Yorian. So I'm not gonna put too much stock into it. I'm just gonna play out this Urza Saga, go with Stoneforge. And honestly, I might go get Cauldra. I kind of like it because if we go get Cauldra, do they have like Force of Vigor here? They have Force of Vigor here. I'm fine blowing that out with Smith's skill on the Urza Saga. Um, we can go get Stoneforge or Stoneforge for the Cauldra. And then if they kill the Stoneforge, that's fine. We potentially draw a card off the Esper Sentinel. And if they don't kill the Stoneforge, obviously we put in the Cauldra. But then we also have the Blacksmith skill next turn to back it up. So let's start with the with the pretty easy attack. Opponent tanked for a while on letting the trigger resolve. It tells me I feel like it's Force of Vigor. This is really weird though. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Let's go get us a Cauldra. Um, if I had an equipper, obviously this would be a different story. We don't. A little, a little more strafe. One thing to note is if this were a Blacksmith or a uh, Steel Shaper's Gift, then we could go, okay, cool. So it's a taxes -y deck. So the Hushbringer is going to be really, really good. Um, so they do that. Okay. So we can either make a Construct here or we can put a stone forge in and then potentially cauldre them next turn. I kind of like just getting, a, just just start, starting to make some constructs. It's hard to argue too much with that plan, especially since they did mulligan, they're down a card. We drew an extra card off of their Utopia Sprawl on the Sentinel. Um, it is funny because usually Sentinel is pretty unimpressive in this matchup, but okay, okay, that's what we're getting. Gotcha, so it is likely Heliod combo. Are they gonna attack? Um, so they have Heliod combo, which means they have the Spike Feeder. They probably also, have like the walking ballista and think that okay so question is are we making another construct i don't think we are actually i think we're just so if we float mana we can go get like a shadow spear shadow spear um could equip could also just go get like a springleaf drum 
for extra mana, which I don't hate that either. Hmm, it's close, I think. So if we make a construct, we can go get a Spring Leaf Drum, play Windswept Heath, but then we can't protect the Stoneforge Mystic, so we're just gonna float mana. And honestly, Ginger Brute isn't bad here either, but unfortunately we don't have a way to suit up a hammer onto something. So I think we can just go get a drum here and then we can play out. So if we play out reality ship with the blue and the colorless, then we can see if we want to fetch and that's fine. Play out the reality chip here. Mm, yeah, don't really want fine. Fetch me a basic. Esper Sentinel, also not great, which means we're definitely playing the Stoneforge. Um, actually, we are gonna lead with the drum here, I think, because if we lead with the drum, then we cast the Stoneforge, we still have an extra mana. It's also making this construct bigger, obviously, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, the Esper Sentinel, since Esper Sentinel certainly not getting into combat here. And we will get a Shadow Spear. And there we go, that's, that's a good drum. Yeah, and we'll just get in there for a cool five points here. And so it's a question of do we play Shadow Spear? I think we want to, I think it's worth protecting the Shadow Spear with the Blacksmith skill in case of another Skyclave Apparition. But opponent is not in great shape. So if they don't infinite combo us this turn, then I really like our spell. Okay, they're drawing a card. That is what we like to see. White, green, white. There we go. That's why we uh, protected this. Question is, what are they grabbing? If they're grabbing the Stoneforge, then I might not even. Grabbing the chip though? That's not cool. Um, think I'm gonna protect that. Funny enough, they can't really even attack now because we can just block with our hexproof indestructible creature. So I could play around solitude, but considering they have three cards and it's I I'm just concerned about it. Um, so does make me wish we had a paradise mantle, but we have the drums, so it's about the same thing anyway. So construct will be a so it'll be go up to a six and then a seven teen. We can also potentially so we play pure steel, play hammer play i'm trying to think so we play the pure steel that cuts off those and then oh i guess we can play pure steel a second so we use the planes to cast pure steel then we have these three sources left we can go hammer shadow spear but then we can't also cauldra and i think the cauldra hammer is better right because plus 15 plus 17 on here i'm sure this is real simple i'm just kind of overthinking it so yeah plus two more so it'll be a seven seven plus 15 is what 22 trample damage they have five six seven eight nine 22 and that's exaxes okay so paladin activate stone forge with planes tap the chip for that and then tap the paladin and the drum for the hammer so i think we do lead with we can also lead with cauldra because the cauldra will tap for mana as well let's start there and i don't think i care about drawing the extra card but we'll go ahead and put the cauldra in here and basically we want to make sure all these are in play so that way we get the free equips um probably means we're actually supposed to do that but whatever we we do it now. and we're of course tapping the the germ token because we're going to be moving the germ and then yep yeah. so let's tap the sentinel of course there is a world we lead with the paladin to chip and then hope to to get there but i'm not super concerned about it it was probably supposed to go cauldra on the construct first it's one of those things all right yeah so 22 um all right yeah, let's get in there. Should be exactsies. A block, block, block. That's nine. 22 minus nine is 13. If I did my basic algebra right, arithmetic, whatever. Oh, okay, take 12. Do you have solitude plus white card? They do not. But yeah, so let's go to game two. There we go. Getting something a little stranger than normal, which is pretty cool. Um, so definitely like Needle because you can name Walking Ballista uh, or Heliod, of course. Situation. Um, Hushbringer is quite good. Not sure if you want all four, but certainly... More than, more than three, or more than two, I don't know if you want. Uh, blacksmith skill's probably pretty good because it protects the Hushbringer. Um, now, what are we wanting to do? Meddling Mage could be good, but they usually do play uh, Collected Company, um, so it's pretty close. Um, potentially March of Otherworldly Light as well. Um, I don't think it's about specific equipment, so I don't think we need that. They don't have a ton of removal, so I'm fine leaving the Paradise Mantle in. Memnite sucks though. Uh, we can trim at least one, maybe two ornithopters. Um, we can probably trim the four sentinels because they are mostly a creature deck. Usually when you bring in the Hushbringers, the sentinel, some of the cards that can go. Um, Ginger Brute seems pretty insane. Shadow Spear is really relevant because of the trample. So we're definitely cutting these. Um, so we need to trim two more cards or we can choose to not bring in March of Otherworldly Light. Honestly, I don't think we need because they're not running a ton of interaction. Um, and then kind of go from there. 
I could trim a drum. I think I'm okay with that. I almost like trimming a drum and keeping an ornithopter because it is an evasive attacker. Um, or, or we could bring in the meddling mage. I don't either. Meddling mage just name uh, walking ballista is pretty good. Um, yeah, let's do the thing. All right, well, we have hate card, hate card, equipper, equipper, and a way to get hammer. Like, it's pretty easy to keep. Um, don't think they are a Blood Moon deck, but they could be doing a super light splash. Uh, they also mulligan to five, so being up two cards is helpful as well. And we'll kind of go from there. So we'll lead with Cigar to Zade, probably, and then turn to Hushbringer. Okay, well, in that case, I will probably. And since our life total isn't really under duress here... We can just that play giver brooms. What you got for me, friend? Green, green. All right, there's a walking ballista. Sure. <laughs> we uh we certainly have hushbringers to spare. Um, so yeah, I think I will do that and then play the hushbringer and then pass the turn. Because we have the paladin, we don't have to kind of play out the aid yet. Okay, spike feeder. We might end up just go getting a uh, a needle. Okay. Well, uh, march of otherworldly light, please. Pretty sure we're dead. That's okay. Yep, not looking great. Um, I guess they can't. Yeah, so they lifelink. They do need to add another counter, so we're not actually dead. Um, yes, because we're not dead because they can... They need to put a second counter on this before they can actually kill us. So, it is a question of do we want to get aid into play and then play a second Hushbringer? I think we just want to make a Construct. I, and the other reality is I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, it could potentially be difficult to get to Metalcraft because if we just make a Construct and then let a let a hammer come into play... I mean, we're just getting Needle though, right? So yeah, we're just gonna make kind of go from there. Oh, so bad. I was definitely supposed to just hold back and then we could just block and then protect. What am I doing with my life? Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. Like everyone's bad. Okay, well, there's also that. So now they can give it lifelink. At least it didn't matter. Assuming they target us. Yep, and concede there. I'm not gonna. All right, all right. So, <laughs> all right. I do like when Magic Online just crashes for no reason, but here we are and let's sideboard. All right. Um, maybe the blacksmith skills, maybe the drums back in. Um, makes me feel like reality chips that this game's about. And then, like, I can see a reality in which, um, the game can go long. I do like having a mantle to fetch for because it can let you just go nuts with the, uh, pure steel paladins, of course. Um, we could also bring in the fairy. That doesn't seem great. Um, a skill. The cauldron seems pretty good because it is a way to just punch through. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. Maybe we don't need the four hush bringers in this matchup. I'd... And let's try this. See if it works. We're going a little bit faster. See so y'all in game three. Hopefully we can kind of pull this back despite trying to punt. But luckily us trying to punt it. Um, we do know our opponent's willing to aggressively. Um, we do have like potential turn two, but because we don't have a second's worth it. Um, I mean, this one's pretty good, honestly. We can go turn one, aid, thopter. And then if we spike a hammer off the top, we can do that. Um, otherwise, we can just go Stoneforge on two off Saga. Yeah, so we'll keep this. Probably bottom. I think we can bottom the close. It's either Aid or Other Land, but I think it's that in. Play Aid, play Ornithopter. They've got Force of Vigor. Honestly, I hope they Force of Vigor like right here instead of uh, the Urza Saga. Okay. Just basic planes. Um, yeah, so I'm doing this because if we are able to grab the needle, I think it's... Obviously, if they have Force of Vigor for these two, that's like gigantic blowout, but they didn't have it. So I'm cool with that. Um, and I think here we will actually just get a Cauldra because they can't... Let's see. So they can't do that um, and boldly no attacks. They definitely kept a slower hand, but who knows? They could just have Walking Ballista on two, Heliot on three, potentially have like Force of Vigor plus green card in the interim. But I don't think we're beating that so i'm i'm content um i wouldn't hate to draw a blacksmith skill that'd be pretty rad too turns out that card's real good i think in retrospect i should have actually brought in all the skills because it does protect pithing needle and that's like pretty insane kind of like that's part of the reason you bring in all the skills against yog as well because protecting a pithing needle is just really big game obviously this is not a matchup i've played a lot so <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, there's that. Ooh, that's fun. Um, and I will just fetch right, get a basic planes. And honestly, we probably just 
put this cauldron in right now. And of course we stack it to where the uh, the living weapon trigger resolves first. So we put the aid trigger on the stack first, let it resolve. Living weapon happens, that's cool. I will choose yes. Of course your opponent can't really respond after that. So it's fine. Um, and in retrospect, that was actually super bad because they can't skyclave a germ, but they can skyclave an orb. We're just making sure to point out everything we could do wrong. <laughs> um, and they could could have uh, like a march here or something, but it is, it'd be a weird time to use march. Okay, do we just get the five damage in? I, I would appreciate it if we could get five damage in. I don't think we're getting march. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So not actually punished. Play the giver and pass the turn. And I don't think we're in danger of dying here. We will get to go. Uh, so if they can't kill the saga, I feel like they should have just marched the saga. Like a a minute ago. So they must have just drawn it. Otherwise, they, they could have marched the saga on turn two. I don't, I don't under, like, frankly. So my guess is they probably have more of that effect. All right, we're just gonna make a construct. Pretty simple. And one, once again, it's one of those things where I was like, if they have answers, they have answers. Okay, so they're besaging that. Okay, sure. So we get to go get a planes. And then what are we getting with? I will probably, I was like, I can get a pithing needle naming windswept heath. I don't hate that either. Yeah, so at this spot, I think it is correct to just grab a needle and name we'll probably just name walking melissa here content with that because heliod is you know reasonable but making sure they can't shoot my creatures down is is so i think it's probably worth it to leave up this giver could totally be wrong um, but yeah let's so in there for damage protecting the construct feels feels pretty um and we'll just play out this Kind of grow the construct, give us a little bit more mana to play with next turn. Um, we have four, five. So we're actually only two mana sources away from equipping Cauldra as well. Obviously, we would just like to draw a Pure Steel Paladin here. I wouldn't hate drawing a uh, like a Hushbringer or an interaction spell either. So they have Collected Company, 99%. And I will fetch here because we don't have a reality chip. There's no value in saving the fetches. I'll get that tapped, untap here. Okay, so Force of Vigor here or Collected not totally sure on why they're doing this now. Okay. And so they're eating the giver, I would presume, because I just protect the... Yep. So we can still protect the Stoneforge here from, let's say, white. Stoneforge can then at least get in for a point of damage. Give her down. All right. Um, And I think we just get in here for four points, five points of damage. Can't effectively block. And I will play that out because it means we can move the Cauldra if we draw a land next turn. So they just have another collected company. Heliod, maybe? They can cast Walking Ballista. Okay, well, that's gross too. Uh, probably just grab the needle. Yep, makes sense. So Hushbringer would have been very good this game. Okay, not gonna grab. So let's fetch, fetch. And I'm gonna put the, the Cauldra on the Construct because obviously it can't be, um, it can't be Skyclaved because it does say non-token, 99. Non-land, non-token, yep. What you got for? Nothing, okay. Am I dead opponent? Do you have the thing? Mm, they could have the thing. I'm trying to think what they're really looking for. So they could go Heliod plus gain some life. Uh, okay, Conclave Mentor, it's pretty good. They can play Walking Ballista 4x equals one. Okay, that's not that. Sure. So as long as they don't have walking ballista, we're still in good shape, right? Um, does going to nine matter? Four, five, six, seven. So if we hit a land, we also get to equip. Yeah. All right. All right, let's get in there. Yeah, so they have to throw at least five toughness under the bus. And Heliod, of course, gets exiled if they block with that. Okay, six. And of course, like drawing, so they only, okay. Uh, so they take one and we get to kill their whole board. Oh, that's fun. They don't get to put counters on anything, but I forgot about the secondary line, <laughs> like completely, to be completely honest. Okay. So their last two cards need to be exactly land. Uh, no, no, because they can just Pendle Haven it. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully they don't have Walking Ballista. If they do, I'm dead. I'm content with that. Looks like they're saying GG Ballista. Um, yeah. All right. Drew one billion lands, died. Let's make sure they give it the ability. Okay, looks like they will. Yeah, we just needed to hit kind of more spells, but cool, I'll see y'all in round two. All right, we are back for round two. We won the die roll, that's pretty cool. Um, this hand sucks. <laughs> Um, this hand, pretty good though. We have Giver plus that. Um, and I think we're supposed to bottom probably second aid. Let's see, no companion. Could also bottom Shadow Spear, but I think I'm all right. Let's see Chrome Coast, Giver of Runes, pass the turn. 
Hopefully we just draw a hammer. That'd be cool. Also take a stone forge mystic. You know, okay, so it looks like potentially Murktide. Could be a bunch of dicks, obviously, but all right. Um, so cigar to aid. I'm just gonna strap the shadow spear up to the giver and get in. Get in for the extra damage, gain the extra life, and might as well. All right, all right. And then this next turn, we're probably just making a construct and then Next turn, make a construct, grab a hammer. Um, I think that was the only time we're attacking with the giver this game. Protecting the constructs seems pretty good. But yeah, it is nice that this doesn't die to unholy heat currently. Um, the other reason I wanted to put the shadow spear in was because it does make my constructs slightly bigger as I start to make them while still using all of my man. Opponent is thinking all the storm. Um, all right, so we're just gonna play a windswept heath and probably pass the turn here. Okay, what you got? Love to see it. I was probably supposed to fetch there in case of something like fire ice. <laughs> like that's that's why, in case they can like tap the saga down or, or potentially. I'm not totally sure what our opponent's on. This is what happens when you start in the own one bracket. Things get weird. Things get weird weird real fast. So I hope at least the entertainment value is good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll fetch. Is it resolve? Am I getting max punished for not fetching when I should have? I kinda hope I am. This is how you learn things by just getting punished as as much as possible at every possible step okay we didn't so i guess the question is are they do they have like dress down if they have dress down then they have dress. but we're making a construct regardless got a little little tutu boy over there oh that's fun that's fun uh i don't think i'm going to make a construct now i think we're just going to float mana i mean we also have the giver for protection but if they have like brazen borrower in response to the giver that's pretty bad the colossus hammer i just think it's really hard to lose if we so we get that they could also be scared okay so yeah they're fetching that's fine um but yeah we're just gonna put a ooh actual hollowed fountain okay yeah so colossus hammer right there uh, yes um i don't think there's a reason not so i will play that out um also move the shadow spear over here which i don't hate this does play around spell pierce though which i don't let's just put them to confuse what they they just have archmage charm because we beat archmage charm all right whack okay uh sure you go to one okay so all their fetches are turned off genuinely so this it strikes me as blue white control splash red probably for fire ice but this is wild this has been a really weird pro blue okay it is nice that all their fetch lands are turned off it's also funny that if we attacked with river and like all those turns ago okay so they probably can bounce this construct fetch gross um <laughs> are we just gonna die to not drawing spells anymore looks like it gross okay so let's play that deck please <laughs> please deck okay so this is definitely a matchup we want the teferi um and then I mean, we have, we have a lot of good cards kind of post-board. Uh, it is unfortunate this is kind of how the game played out exactly. I think if at any point we, we have another spell, we're in really good shape. So if they're able to stick like a fairy here, Chalice on one, that's pretty great. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm about to pack it in. Um, so if I'm in a, a tournament setting, I keep playing that game, but I like avoiding... Uh, a little bit of tilt damage. Yeah, so I'll see y'all in game two once we sideboard, maybe. Sideboarding, okay. So Teferi's really good. Um, Spell Pierce, very good. Blacksmith skill, quite good. I don't hate Needle either to name Teferi Time Rattler, which is a little awkward, but you know what it is. March of Otherworldly Light is also a consideration in some number. Um, I like our bonus equipment. I do, however, like trimming at least... At least multiple zeros uh probably all the ornithopters honestly you can probably trim the mantle as well just leaving yourself with the one drum um seal shaper's gift i don't think is where you really care to be and then i think that's about it so we can bring in one march that's and i'm pretty good uh we have the full four skill the two pierces the teferi's all very good the needle of course is is reasonable um and then march is a secondary answer to a chalice of the void so i wonder if we were supposed to be more aggressive with that hammer just throwing it in it doesn't feel right though because if they have if they have solitude right um they solitude in response to the cigar aid trigger then the cigar aid trigger gets countered because we have to give it protection from white and then i mean they're down a card but they had seven cards in hand i don't know i'm pretty happy with how i played it um this hand is not so we will throw it back <laughs> um this one's fine we will keep it uh we'll obviously keep the two lands um aid hammer probably bottom the ginger brute and probably the hammer and then just turn one aid turn two stoneforge yeah 
and we will fetch shock because we have those spell pierces in our deck now I'm sure we can cast them on time and let's go ahead and cast this aid past the turn and we will start putting pressure immediately on them with this saga stone forge which is nice uh so they're probably prismatic ending here fine I mean, by fine, I'm not happy, but here we are. All right, it's not great now that the aid is gone. Okay, now the question is, what are we getting here? And I am inclined to get a Cauldra to force removal on the Stoneforge. Um, it also is potentially correct to get the Reality Chip, but without another creature to attach it to, it doesn't feel great. Um, I think we just try to high roll this Cauldra. Mm. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I think when we mold a five in what is, I would consider not a great matchup, um, you kind of you kind of got to hope for the best they know about cauldra yeah there's a solitude okay but it got them down a card it's a fairy time raveler none none other which i'm pretty cool with as long as they don't also have an answer for this why <laughs> um all right so they kept a one lander um which this is going to be kind of funny actually so we get to so they probably have like chalice here um so when we untap we will likely do they have another removal spell there yeah of course um okay so we will float mana of course right on time and what are we getting here i might get pithing needle on flooded strand i really don't hate that um it's either pithing needle on flooded strand or ginger brute and i don't think ginger brute is the trick here so i'm fine just doing this and this is actually the reason that i took out flooded strand from the deck um because there are situations like of the fetch lands you are most likely to name flooded strands so they've used two endings a solitude and a teferi okay all right um i think i'm running this out if they kill it they kill it but i want the extra card really badly off of it hopefully they they've just drawn two flooded strands boo boo <laughs> um at least prismatic ending is not super likely here um but we'll see. Oh, it looks like a prismatic ending. Chalice on one. Okay. Thank you, March of Otherworldly Light. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's what we like to see. Um, so I'm just going to do both of these right now. Uh, and we are marching. Of course, we are paying two mana because we don't want to get it countered. And then let's draw a card. Okay. It's not a bad card. I'll take it. Yeah. So I figured they were probably keeping off the back of a chalice if they kept a one land hand with like solitude, prismatic ending, prismatic ending. Okay. Another chalice. Yep. Uh, to fairy, please. Oh, there we go. There we go. Well, I feel like this league is going to at least be entertaining. Okay. Um, yeah. Attack for two. Um, and I might honestly run out the pure steel. That way, if they play a Teferi, we can still attack the Teferi down. This also increases our clock by quite a bit. Um, Stoneforge would also be pretty nice. So they have, they still don't have Wrath mana. Um, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. Honestly, with how heavily they're leaning on these, so that's t a Teferi. Okay. Maybe they have to bounce the needle so they can fetch. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Can I have it? I would be so happy with the Teferi. What a weird game. What a weird game. Um, okay, so we can... What did we board out? So we did board out the mantle. That's good to know. Um, so we do have the reality chip still in our deck too. Um, but I think we start off by going to it to fairy, to it them, and then play the stone for out. Um, yeah. And just grab the one that doesn't get countered by Chalice of the Void. Um, obviously we get to draw a card. If they wrath me, they wrath me, but I don't think I can just hold back either. Um, yeah. But hopefully we just draw that Teferi that's in the deck still. Um, they have had to use a lot of cards. It's nice. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Right now we also have a two-turn clock just with the Paladins and the Stone Forges and everything. Do we get to untap? If we get to untap, that's right. So they can hard cast Solitude which is not I'm, I'm not happy about but we also get to like put this cauldron in if we, they let us untap okay all right well i'm gonna do that and hopefully we draw a land in these two two draw steps uh, i will choose yes okay there we go and yes draw a card not really where we <laughs> um pretty sure we're just supposed to jam this chip i am content playing into it i am if they get me with settle the wreckage they get me with settle sometimes with this deck you just have to accept that you're gonna lose to some weird stuff it's, you know modern the format and also you're not playing four color control so you don't have quite as much uh control over what's going on um yeah so we get to draw a card here draw two cards unless they counter it okay they are countering it mm -hmm. Okay. Do they also have... I don't think this works how they want to work card. And so we are going to move this first. We're going to move this right here. And then we're going to move this here. It's like, uh, that did not work out how you want. And that's part of the reason I like Cauldre in this matchup, because it does force the action on the Stoneforge. Um, yeah. Okay. So 
knowing that they are so all in on these chalices i don't hate bringing in the extra march um they will chalice on one which means these drums are a little more awkward but we only have the one so i think i'm okay with that um and then what can we trim if we're gonna gonna bring that in uh the shadow spear we do not need shadow spear i don't know why i have it in the deck currently but here we are all right um pithing needle on flooded strand yeah let's uh fingers crossed hope we get there and the reason i like memnite in this matchup better than ornithopter is because memnite can actually like take down a teferi when they go uh teferi three and then bounce them memnite can clean it up. um yeah this hand is not soft to chalice so i will keep it and see how it goes hopefully we draw like an urza saga that would be an excellent follow-up urza saga is obviously one of the best cards in the matchup so i am very tempted to just run this colossus hammer out yeah i'm a bad and i'm not concerned about my life total so we will just get really good mana uh okay all right well if i was concerned about blood moon before i'm certainly not all right and now we do get to just go stoneforge for cauldra stoneforge for cauldra leave up blacksmith skill um okay cool so they have counterspell that's what you're telling me right um yeah i mean i'm still feels like a counterspell to me well yeah it smells smells like a counterspell i'm shocked right so now we go ink moth stone forge what is okay so they have this is so weird um i think we lead with the aid here then stone forge mm, okay um and i think here we do we could get chip Chip is actually really good here as well because it's a body. We can protect it with skill. Um, and it is a redraw with Paladin in play. Hammer's also really good though. I'm gonna get Chip. Hopefully we just hit a land and win the game. That won't actually, but it'll make me feel like I can win the game. And feeling is half the bat. One of those. Okay. That's not nice. Um, but at least it didn't tag an Urza Saga, which we're going to draw now. Um, so I think we are just supposed to chip here. Um, I think, yeah, we do this. And then, yep, we get to attach it to the Stone Forge, which means we can just play cards off the top. Okay, more one drops. Hate our spot? It's, it's kind of weird because it's, I don't like our spot and I don't have spot. And usually it's one or the other. Spreading seas. Man, my metal crap. Hopefully they just don't play a chalice here. Um, drawing all three, like three of the skills is not like my favorite thing. What do they, what's going on? What are we tapping three mana for? Are we trying to see like a giver? Okay, wrath, sure. One, two, okay. That's a good one. Um, that's a really good one. I feel like we're just supposed to play Sentinel here. And now we do have Blacksmith skill up. We will not attack, obviously, because it deals zero damage. All right, opponent, what you got for me? The interaction with Sentinel getting pumped by Blacksmith skill might come up here as well, which is really cool. Um, okay, it is not. Okay, so I think we're just supposed to attack for one here. Are they gonna try to kill her right now? Oh man, oh man. Okay, so what are you trying to hit here? Okay. Um, so eat that, eat that. Teferi can come down. I feel like we're just supposed to protect both, honestly. Move to blocks. Okay. We will also skill that. And I'm partially doing this because we're just skill flooded. But um, also because, I mean, we get to kill the Solitude, which means they can't bounce it with their own Teferi. Um, and it means that they won't just rot in our hands if they play a Chalice and this Teferi doesn't resolve. Okay. So they don't have Kahira in their deck either, which means they probably have Snapcaster Mage. Okay. What do we have? So they only have three cards in hand. Okay. Man, we don't draw like <laughs> why, why would we do that? Um, costs, what, five to animate, right? One, two, three, five. And they still get to hold up Counterspell. Right here. So Counterspell, yep. But if they pay for it, that means we do get to attack for one. Pretty exciting. And obviously, if at any point we had seen a, um, a land on top, I'd probably equip the chip to the Sentinel to actually get to play the land. But since we haven't, then we haven't. But yeah, we'll see. EE -E on one. What a jerk. Now, the question is, are they going to wait to pop it? Or are they just going to pop it? Should pop it right now. Good job, opponent. So we can play Paladin. Can't hold up skill and play Paladin. But we can go Hammer, Ginger Brute, attack for one, and then hold up skill. Yeah. The problem is we're still not able to hold up skill next turn either. So I feel like we're just put in here. Okay, cool. All right. And boldly not attacking here. Fetching, what you got? This has been a really weird game. The la both games two and three have been exceptionally strange. Um, I wonder, 
There's no way they boarded out Chalice, right? I guess it's possible. Okay. So Ginger Brute gets us to three artifacts. Kind of a fan of that. You do it. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. Costs five still, right? So can't animate. I mean, I guess they can animate, but they can't, or can't block. All right. Back for two points of damage. What a weird game. <laughs> what a very strange strength. We've drawn a lot of lands opponent, but if you could keep doing that, I would appreciate it. So... Just empty, or they have one card in hand still. Let's see if we can get a hammer to stick. Hammer to stick would be real nice. Oh boy, yes. Um, so first things first, equip here, probably equip here, play Saga, and then probably just attack for 1 billion damage. I'm cool for attacking for 1 billion damage. And we're splitting the difference here. We're splitting the difference here, obviously, because if they do have a removal spell, we don't want to get that blown out. Um, and yeah, okay. Uh, so reality chip, pretty good. It's a body that we were able to fetch up when we needed it. It also gives us some information about the top of our deck. So if we were all, if we were ever drawing fetch land, then that would help us too. Archmage charm, drawing two cards. Okay. I probably should have equipped the chip to the paladin post combat. All right. The uh, the rare turn eleven spell pierce connecting. <laughs> What, what is this game? What is magic? Oh, okay. Looks like, yeah. All right, perfect. So uh, I guess that's how you navigate blue-white control when everything goes sideways for everybody involved. But uh, I wonder if they cut the counters or the uh, Chalice of the Voids or they just didn't draw them. But that was interesting. So I'll see y'all in round three. All right, we are back for round three and we lost the die roll. And that's fine because we're going to six anyway. Uh, this hand has no colored sword. So um, this hand has no creatures. It is powerful otherwise. Uh, honestly, I think this is the best hand we've seen. Um, bottom, probably just two lands here. I don't really want to shuffle them back in either. So I think we can just bottom that. I don't mind keeping the two artifacts because it does grow the constructs. Um, hopefully we just draw like spring leaf drum off the top. Well, at least we have a way to gain gain three left. Um, all right, so I'm just going to play out all of these before the the stupid Eidolon gets online. Um, yeah. There we go. Because taking an additional six damage is a really good way to lose the game against. Who knows? Maybe they won't attack or maybe they won't kill the Ginger Brute. And then we get to Urza Saga and just sack the Ginger Brute to gain three. I've seen weirder things happen for lightnings. Okay, the Lava Spike, that doesn't kill a Ginger Brute. What you got for me? I will not block. I will just take the two points. And then this turn... Uh, and of course I attacked with a Ginger Brute because in no world am I blocking on a turn that I can't also sacrifice unless something super weird happens. Okay, so fetch, are we shocking too? What is the plan? So fetch, shock, are we killing the Ginger Brute now? No, Rift Bolt. Okay, so we'll play out the Urza Saga. This is why I didn't shock in the Hollowed Fountain because it is possible that we don't have to shock that. I can see a world, because I'd rather, you know, just fetch a basic with the Arid Mesa um, than I would take the two, because this only deals one, and one is less than two. Sometimes the small number. This does need to tap, right? Yeah, I'm not crazy. Deal one. So let's see what they shoot here, because that, that could change a lot. All right, yeah, Rift Bolt coming off suspend. What, what are you shooting? I feel like they're kind of priced into hitting this Ginger Brute. Hitting me. Okay, fine. So do they have another removal spell for the Ginger? All right, so we go to 11, um, and then we get to block hopefully that'd be really cool i'm very much about land okay yeah i mean i'm, I'm gonna block with this ginger um because that effectively gains us five life um and if they skull crack that's we're still gaining three life because of the prowess trigger cookie monster you've finally been caught all right food gain three life okay yeah so they're okay that's fine um obviously not like super excited about it but could be a lot worse um they're down to two cards in hand we're about to start making constructs Okay, okay. Let's give me a basic planes or a sea crumb, please. Uh, Urza Saga. Interesting. I think I would just go fetch a basic here. Generally, there's not a big difference between uh, seven and eight damage. Yeah, I mean, probably crack in for one here. Yeah, that's fine. We can always block with the Ornithopter if we absolutely have to. Okay, so this probably means they don't have Searing Blaze in their hand. Otherwise, they would probably just hold the fetch. So we're going to save the life. My guess is that they don't have Searing Blaze based on that. But we will see. And we're 99% chance getting the Shadow Spear here off of the Saga. Okay, that's fine. Eidolon is not, like, that's not the spot in the game. Okay, yep, so let's make a construct. The question is, do we make a construct here? Because we're probably not casting the Paradise Mantle. Um, because if we don't make a construct here, we do get to equip the Shadow Spear, which is pretty good. And I think that's the plan. Because um, then we get to play this Urza Saga and start making more constructs. Yeah. 
I do hate giving up a construct, but I do also love gaining a bunch of life. Get some, get something you like, and then you lose something else. You okay, Shadow Spear. So that means they can't kill the construct because it now has too much toughness. And do you have another, another um, uh, Skullcrack opponent? We will see. Obviously, game one, you don't have to worry about Deflecting Palm. Um, but I mean, I mean, sometimes your opponents are mad, man, and they're like, I'm, I'm sick of being beaten by a hammer. Someone hurt them. Yeah, and so if we connect here and gain the five life, we probably win the game. You know, weirder things have happened. It's not actually locked in until their life total hits zero. But usually a like a lava axe helix. So they'll go to eight. We'll go to twelve, and then we'll start making more constructs next turn, which will just put this into the abyss. And I might actually move the Shadow Spear from Construct to like an Ornithopter. I honestly don't hate that because this can safely block either one of them. All right. And I will probably block. They attack with Swift Spear, probably just block the Swift Spear. Um, if they attack with both, probably double block the Eidolon, maybe? Question mark. We'll see what they do. Okay. They attacked with nothing, so that made it much, much simpler. So since we got to 12 life, like obviously, you know, if this were still a 5-5 five, five, um, or a yeah, 5-5, five, five. then we attacked and they didn't have an answer for it, the game's over. But since we went to 12, now we can just attack with both of these and win the game that way. Um, so we probably just play tapped Hollowed Fountain and attack with both the Ornithopter and the 4-4. Uh, and this will put us to 13. We'll then get to make a 5-5. Five, five. And so Burn is one of those matchups where... It is a good matchup, but sometimes they do just have, you know, the insane draw where they're like one drop, one drop, kill your thing, uh, hit you for four, and then bolt you, bolt you, you're dead in a couple turns. But ordinarily, that's not what happens. And especially if you can like slow them down or if you don't let them get a lot of Eidolon hits in, you're usually in pretty good shape. Uh, okay, I am very, very down. So are they going to shoot the construct after the Eidolon goes away? Interesting. Okay. And of course, we can... We can make a, a construct kind of on the fly. How are we doing this before damage? Skull crack, okay. So they take two and we go to nine, they go to six, and then they'll take an additional one, go to five. Okay, all right, yeah, and let's cast all these spells. And as much as I would like to play Esper Sentinel here, I think just making a six six seems better. Um, and I'm not gonna equip because if they have a removal spell for the Mem Knight, it's just a huge blowout. I feel like they don't have a removal spell, though. Um, I also, it's just, if it, <laughs> it's just not worth the risk because we're, we're in a very, very good spot here. Okay. Boros Charm me? Yep. All right. It's pretty good. So now they need, like, exactly two burn spells, which they could have. And if they do, they do. Um, but they also drew both Skull Cracks this game. And I think they only play two usually. So we shall see what happens. But they've also only seen six lands in their deck, seven seven spells. So they're on track to hit more. Okay, cool. So they didn't have exactly burn spell, burn spell. Um, I said burn spell, burn spell, because of course they could crack Sunbake Canyon and hope to hit like, you know, bolt, bolt, spike, spike. But yeah, okay, cool, cool. So he got game one. I think we we're on the draw on a mold of five. Is that really, is that what happened this game? I'm gonna scroll back and make sure. Yeah, so we mulligan to five and we were on the draw. Okay. <laughs> okay, I feel better. I feel better. Um, so here I like Spell Pierce, obviously, because it does counter Deflecting Palm. I like Blacksmith Skill because it counters, um, it protects your Shadow Spear, which is the biggest. Um, Needle's not important. Meddling Mage, no. Hushbringer, some people like to bring in because it does have lifelink, and I can't fault them for that, really. But I'm not huge on it. I definitely like cutting the Reality Chip, even though it is a reasonable blocker. I like the Steel Shaper's Gift because it does count as extra copies of Shadow Spear, which is your best card in the matchup. Mem Knight doesn't do anything. Ornithopters are not great. I think Esper Sentinel on the draw is also kind of clunky. And so I think it's pretty reasonable to bring in a couple March of Otherworldly Light. Um, and we can probably trim this and keep like one Esper Sentinel here uh, because they are likely to just kill a ton of our stuff. And so yeah, um, this seems fine. Um, I do like Cauldra because they can't smash it and they can't, um, can't really answer it very effectively. And it's a way to spread out your power against them as opposed to having to hammer. And sometimes that gets awkward against Deflecting Palm. Um, since I have Teferi, I could see bringing it in because of Deflecting Palm. But man, it's, 
it's three mana for something that doesn't affect the board. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave. Uh, if I had defense grid, I would do that because it's two mana and it also adds to metal. Fairy, I don't think is where you want. It's also really easy for them to just kill if they want. All right, so we have land, sentinel, shadow spear, drum. I think this is a keep. Um, and hope we hit a land. Like this hand's quite good if we do hit. Okay, land guide. I always do this to myself where I like trap myself and I just brick off forever. But I, I guess I just need to keep doing this because this is what I'm doing. Is it a two drop? Oh, it's an ornithopter. Okay, deal, deal. I'll take it. Um, and I am just gonna empty my hand as much as possible here. So we'll play out the drum and then probably, probably the giver. All right, opponent, give me a land, please. A land would be just so good. I would also take a cigar. <laughs> I'm not picking. Take what? We have 21 lands plus the four aids. So we, we are like 25 of 52. It's almost half. Planes, deal. All right, deck. See, this is why why I start, I keep all these one landers against burn because sometimes my deck is like, I'm gonna reward you. Um, but we did have literally all one mana spells um, and we had a sea chrome coast for painless mana. I think it's pretty, oh. Okay, yeah, deal. I'll take the ram. Are they missing on land? No. Okay, so what we got? What do we, so we probably go Esper Sentinel Shadow Spear here, hold up Blacksmith Skill. Go Esper Sentinel, Shadow Spear. There, I like being able to hold up March. Shadow Spear, hold up March and Skill. So we're just gonna pass here. No reason. We're basically just gonna hold up shields on the Shadow Spear for the entire game. And I'm probably gonna save this March for like if they play Roiling Vortex or if they play um, Eidolon. Those are kind of the, the two things. This Esper Sentinel is actually likely to draw us a card um, with this Miss Skill. Half the Exile. I'm very, very much about it. I get it because if they let the Giver on tap, then that card's never going to be very good. Okay, they're attacking. Eck, okay, okay. I, I would prefer an Urza Saga, but you know, I'm not going to complain that much. Um, I think we just take it. And so this turn we get to equip Shadow Spear to the Esper Sentinel. That makes the tax more. We can also Blacksmith Skill and then crack it to Lifelink. Cracking in for two lifelink is awkwardly good against burn. Like you don't have to gain a ton of life all at once. Gaining a few points here and there can absolutely be the difference. Of course, the games where I'm like, yeah, Esper Sentinel is not great on the draw. It turns out probably quite good on the draw, but we'll see. Right. Uh, so we are going to play the Mesa and we won't crack it because the, the guide might give us some more information and determine if we actually want to crack it or not. So if they're going to try to kill it, they should try to kill it now because that way at least the tax is lower, but they're not, okay? And they know about, and those are the three cards that got revealed to the Goblin Guide. Can I attack opponent? They skull crack me here, draw a card, and who knows, maybe we'll just draw, yeah, just just two opponent, nothing's wrong. Like, it's this is fine. Oh, okay. They are drawing a card, genuinely can cool. Um, yep, like I said, we're saving the Arid Mesa because if they attack us with Goblin Guide and they don't give us a land, then, and we like see the spell on top and it is bad, then we can fetch it away with Arid Mesa. Um, otherwise, we just, since we don't need the mana thanks to their, their pet. So let's see what we get here. Stoneforge Mystic, I don't think we want. Getting Cauldre is pretty good, but um, I mean, it's it's not bad either. So I'm gonna go ahead and block here. Block the Goblin Guide, I think. Blacksmith Skill, because it's an artifact creature, of course, this will turn into a 2-4. If they wanna kill something, then we get to draw it because they, there's no way they can kill it and pay for the two mana tax on the Sentinel. Um, okay. Cool. So we take one here and we get to draw Stoneforge Mystic. All right. And I think we're going to get a Cauldra because that's pretty good. Um, it allows us to, you know, like I talked about in sideboarding, Cauldra lets us just attack for smaller amounts so we don't get blown out by Deflecting Palm, uh, which there's no spot this game where Deflecting Palm would have done it. I feel like their hand is full of like Smash to Smithereens and, and things like that. Deflecting Palm sideboard cards and they like when are they supposed to cast that card? That never is the end. Okay, so Stoneforge resolves. And yep, let's get a Cauldra. And we can just pass the turn here. And because we're getting in those chip shots, we've gained, what, four points of life from the Esper Sentinel Shadow Spear lifelink triggers? Pretty good. They also could just be really bad and just kind of kept a, a hand based solely on the, like, the good sideboard cards, which, if like, obviously you can't always play around the sideboard cards, but... If they aren't presenting you with a ton of pressure also, there's no incentive for you to just play into that stuff. No attacks you can in play, so we might not even care if the stone... So that way we can get a hollowed fountain. It's uh, a it's one less land that will deal us damage. Because if we draw a hollowed fountain, obviously it'll deal two to us. But if we fetch it, it will only deal the one from the fetch. We'll fetch. Let's get a... 
hollowed and untapped. It is also nice that if they like, mm, yeah, no reason, just put this bad boy into play. Girl? No, no, legendary construct thing. So if they do put it, if they like were to block the Esper Sentinel and then cast a removal spell at our face, we can either kill the monastery Swiss Spear, so this will still deal the two damage thanks to the tramp. Um, but yeah, so let's, and I'm gonna split the pressure here, make sure that the Sentinel is dealing two, the Cauldre is dealing five, because when I'm at 16, I don't need to gain six life by moving the shadow. There's very little difference between being at 18 life from the Esper Sentinel hit and being at B6, so 22, like we're, we're above 50. So yeah, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna let this happen. Um, we'll probably get to draw a card because it's a spell here, which is to me. Um, okay, four damage. So we are going to get to draw a card for sure. Um, and I am gonna just hold up the skill because we're gonna protect the Shadow Spear. Um, and we're just gonna march this Mono Spear by tapping the Ornithopter, the Hollowed Fountain, and the yeah, we get to draw a card. Okay, well, that, that makes that decision easier for sure. Okay, a four. And if it didn't have the trample from the Shadow Spear, then we would not get to... We would not get to gain any life because the damage wouldn't actually happen. But because it does have trample, we're still going to gain two... They're gonna go to eight off of this, and we're gonna go to 14. Like, this game's over. With with the blacksmith skill, I don't know how they're supposed to win. So, land. Yeah, I think they just flooded super hard this game. That would be my guess. It's turn six, and they have played a land every turn of the game. Yep, they flooded. I'm curious what they kept, because I'm 90% kept a seven. I've totally missed it. We will see. All right, and we're just gonna keep doing this. I might move the Shadow Spear over to the Stone Forge. I think keeping it on the Sentinel to increase that tax is relevant. Ooh, Ginger Brew. Um, let's see, so five, six, seven, eight, nine. So even if they removal spells, we win if we attack with the Ginger Brew. Okay, you sold me. You sold me on it, deck. All right, so I will note, we did not draw an Equipper this game. In 20 cards, we didn't draw an Equipper, um, 19 cards, whatever. But between kind of playing tight, them flooding a little bit, um, and then us just going, you know, managing our life total really effectively, making sure that we're not getting blown out, playing around things as much as possible. We're able to pull it out. They could have Deflecting Palm here, but they're kind of inclined to Deflecting Palm the Cauldra, and then we still gain two life, and then they still take two, three, four. So they still go to four. Um, we take three net. So we go to 11, everything but the Ornithopter. And like, honestly, we could march the Cauldra Germ if they do Deflecting Palm it as a way to just gain. I don't think we'll do that because I don't think we'll need to, but I mean, so what are they choosing? Let's see if they pay. They did not pay. Okay. And they kind of have to hit the right. Yeah. So I think I do judge this. No opponent. I would like to gain five life here. And then they still take four. They go to four. Okay. Are they fetching? What are they going to do here? Are they going to try to kill the sentinel or something? What is the uh, skulk? So they are taking, so we're going to go to 11 and they're going to take two, three, four. We could turn it into six. So they couldn't even fetch, but I don't think that's, I think this is fine. They're down to two cards in hand. Um, and yeah, I mean, I can't think of a combination of cards that kills us here. Um, you know, I'm only human, so I could totally be forgetting something. And if I am, I hope I get, yes, yeah, so they've used a Deflecting Palm, a Skull Crack, Boros Charm, Common Guide. Yeah, I think if we just protect this, the Shadow Spear, it's real hard to lose. All right, let's see it. Okay. Okay, that's, um, question is, are we supposed to gift? I don't think so. I don't think it does any. So let's attack four points. I will attack for lethal damage opponent. What you got? And of course, if they do like deflecting palm, the Esper Sentinel, we can choose to pay. Okay. So, I mean, we can, we just see if we'll, yeah. So they just, they had a pile of sideboard cards. Um, so yeah, I'll skill here. And then we have a spell pierce as well. If they have another two mana spell, if they have a, like a one mana removal spell for the Esper Sentinel. I'm, okay, so Lightning Helix, yeah, all right. And that should do it, unless they have another one mana removal, in which case that's fine, because they don't gain three life. Okay, but yeah, that's uh, that'll do it. And I'll see y'all, well, let, let this actually happen. Yep, and I'll see y'all in round four. All right, looks like we are back for round four. And this hand sucks. It's like theoretically powerful. We're not casting anything and casting things is important. So once again, throw that back. Uh, this hand's fine. Um, so obviously the Saga, the Stone Forge, probably the Drum, the Ink Moth, and the Aid. Can't do that. We, uh, I'm gonna keep the prettier fetch land. And I don't hate getting the Drum down because it acts as additional mana. Um, I think this is correct and we bottom. No. We bottom the drum because we just go turn one, land, 
aid turn to forge here but i think in that case we do want the ink moth nexus so let's throw that back and that back um because now this means that we can set up a stone forge kill not kill but like a powerful stone forge line or we can do an ink moth kill let's do that um an opponent got to keep seven on the play what a jerk let's see okay but okay i don't know well, I'm not gonna play around. Um, and I'm just gonna get a basic plans here. Get a Sigarda's aid into play. And they didn't have anything, so spirits? Okay, living it, yeah, yeah. And so, all right, well, at least we're throwing away the the game that is really best. So, yep, yeah. Urza Saga, Stoneforge Mystic. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll get a hammer here, fine. And then next turn we go Ink Moth. Okay, so that's two, um, but we'll see. I mean, this isn't the most explosive start and grief doesn't mess us up too badly either. So, okay, all right, yeah, this is honestly not that bad. Three dudes in play, they living end us. Yep, okay, okay, honestly, could be a lot worse. And they don't have any flyers, which is kind of the kicker here, right? Okay, so Ink Moth for sure. So it can actually attack next turn. Um, we could also Steel Shaper's Gift here, but I think making a dude is like not close the best thing we could do. Um, and yeah, I think we just try to go for the kill. If they have an answer, they have an answer, but this is our mold of five on the draw against Living End. <laughs> so, you know, play to your outs, right? And I am tempted to block here. Yeah, not like that. Are we just supposed to take seven, 12, 13, 14? That's a lot of damage. I think it's fine though. All right, cool, cool. All right, let's make a construct here. Untap, float mana, and animate. Let's see if it works. <laughs> if it works, it works. All right, and I'll probably just play out this ink moth. Yes, I, I will. Um, And let's get in there. Wow, is this gonna do it? This might do it. I was probably supposed to steal Shaper's Gift for a Shadow Spear. Oh my God, it worked. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, it worked. We did the thing. Okay, so we do get to bring in approximately 1 billion cards here. Um, okay, cool. So, and I've done this in my my breakdown, like my deep dive for the matchup. So if you're interested in seeing like a really deep dive into how the matchup plays out, kind of what role you want to do, um, kind of pre and post board, it's on my Patreon, check it out. But here's kind of the short version. So post board... You, you can kill them very quickly, right? But most of the time you're not going to, especially post board when they bring in, you know, some amount of foundation breakers, bounce spells, and or force of vigors. And those are all kind of big problems in terms of you executing really quickly. And then they can wrath you on turn three and put in, you know, anywhere between four and 20 power. And so you actually don't really go hard on the combo. You actually go a lot harder on the hate bear aspect. So that's why we have the Lavinia's. Meddling Mage is basically Lavinia number three. Um, it doesn't stop Force of Vigor, obviously, but we can play Deploy, Meddling Mage, and Lavinia. Obviously, we can deploy Teferi as well. And then you're bringing in the Blacksmith skills and the Spell Pierces. Spell Pierce because, obviously, you know, it counters Living End many times. Sometimes, you know, the games go along. And then Blacksmith skill protects your hate bears. So if you have Lavinia in play, it's almost impossible for them to win. And so Meddling Mage does a very similar thing. Blacksmith skill protects Lavinia. So that's why. Um, Esper Sentinel is really bad because what, you draw a card when they living end you and you die. Um, that sounds terrible. I leave the Memnite in over some of these Ornithopters just because one damage, sometimes the chip shots do matter. Um, Giver you leave in because it protects these. Cauldra I like because you are trimming down on pieces of the combo and it's hard to actually combo them with their anti-U cards. And so um, being able to turn Stoneforge into a standalone threat can be really important. Um, and then I like to keep all the mana rocks in because it enables you to have blue mana more consistently. Finally, we need to trim one more card, probably just an Ornithopter or a... Yeah, an Ornithopter is cool. Um, obviously, we don't re have Relic, but I haven't found Relic is usually the card that does it in the matchup. It's good, right? I, if I had it, I would bring it in, but I don't. So, so, it's really tough. Um, so we have Lavinia and a bunch of Paladins, but I don't think it quite does it because we need exactly a blue source. Um, this hand doesn't do anything. We are continuing to do nothing. Um, so I'm actually just going to go to four. Like, this, this hand's not going to win. Uh, oh, they also mulligan to five. So I feel better. <laughs> Four it is. Okay, this hand, quite good. Um, so we probably bottom skill hammer? 
so we need both lands. Um, Hammer's pretty good because it protects Paladin, but Paradise Mantle draws a card off Paladin and it can potentially let us equip. So yeah, I think we're bottoming that. Oh God, yeah, we need a bottom four cards. Okay, well, this is a lot easier then. <laughs> So I'm going to keep the Paladin and the Hate card, and hopefully it gets there. Yeah, hopefully we just like rip Lavinia or Meddling Mage here. Uh, that would be really nice. <laughs> so I think they kept five, right? Yeah, so they kept five. You are so late to the game, Giver of Runes. What are you doing with your life? Um, so I'm going to represent Spell Pierce. Maybe they won't go for it. A man can dream. A man can dream. And this is why Lavinia and Meddling Mage are markedly better than Teferi. Because coming down on turn two instead of turn three, especially if you're on the draw, is just a world of difference. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, they don't have a third land. That's definitely a thing that happens. Okay, uh, I'm I'm a jam to fairy. Oh, I resolved. Uh, and I think I'm just gonna tick up here. Not many things to bounce. Plus, we can bounce later for value. Um, trying to think if there's anything they could flash in here that would matter. No, because we have to fairy in play. Obviously, I don't play with the card a lot, but all right, Giver is getting in there with damage. And so this is kind of what I saw, I spoke about earlier, like where Stoneforge Mystic is now an actual threat, right? So we can just play Stoneforge Mystic and um, now we have a Cauldra and we can actually kill them in like three turns as opposed to a Hammer, which they can kill. A lot of things can go wrong. Um, so first things first, play this Stoneforge Mystic. Um, so I'm trying to think if we get a hammer here, we can't kill them next turn anyway. So I, so if we got a hammer, right? So we could paladin next turn plus play a hammer, draw a card, and then we're still short one artifact to kill them with ink moth. Yeah, I think we just get cauldra here and then, and we can attack with the giver. I don't think there's a reason to though. We could also play another giver. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so next turn we get to attack for, let's see, six because we attack with one of the givers. Okay, we cycling. So they have Brazen Bar, which can bounce to fairy, but it's a lot harder to do once he's already in play. Just kind of the sequencing. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, So let's do the easy part first. Probably supposed to draw a card there. I don't think it really is where you want to be. So yeah, we just attack for six here. Attack for six, and then we can attack for seven next turn, right? And so that's not quite lethal. So I think I do want to draw a card here. See if we can spike a land, like that exact scenario. Um, and then we play Stoneforge Mystic, probably, uh, yeah. Play Stoneforge Mystic, probably go get a hammer. The reality is it probably doesn't. Um, but yep, hammer. And now they are they are factually dead next turn because we can go Paladin, hammer, um, and they, cool. All right, so there you go, Living End, Mulligan. I mean, they mold a five and then missed their land, third land drop. So, you know, it was a weird game. It was a mold of five versus a mold of four. But game one, you know, we did what we could and they didn't actually nut draw us. I wonder if they have griefs in the deck because grief, grief into other pieces is usually how I lose this matchup. Yeah, so I'll see y'all in round, oh my gosh, five. All right. All right, we are back for round five. With opponent has an excellent name. Respect to you, Bingus. And this is our hand on the play. We have Sentinel into Saga, Giver. Honestly, so this is on the lower end of hands I would keep, but in the blind with Esper Sentinel and Saga in game one, I think it's a key. It's a weird one. Totally agree. But so I don't think it makes a difference which uh which fetch land we play here. I'm just gonna lead with. And next turn we probably will just play Giver and uh, Shadow Spear off the off the Urza Saga. Okay, okay, is this the mirror match? Oh, nope, this is Amulet. All right, well, this is not really that. All right, so you're saying there's a shot. You are saying there's a shot deck. Okay, yeah, I mean, all right, let's get in there. Maybe we'll just draw like Stoneforge, Steel Shaper's Gift or Hammer off the top. Like, I'd be cool with that. Funny enough, gaining two life could also make the difference in this matchup, but we will see. Like, the, the Saga Amulet hands are incredibly scary from Amulet, you know, because it's the name of the deck. Um, but yeah, hopefully we just draw a hammer or a virtual copy of hammer. Problem is the saga is gonna get them a second amulet next turn and that, that almost always means they tighten unless, unless they have a bounce land that they're having to bounce right now. So if they like go bounce land, bounce Ursus Saga to their hand, play 
um, Dryad Replay Urza Saga. I'm actually weirdly less scared of that. I mean, it's also pretty terrible. Less scared. Maybe it's an explorer and they really don't want to let me draw another card. I understand that. I don't like my opponent cards either, but here we are. Um, we do have a lot of good sideboard hate for this matchup. Like Lavinia is fantastic. Meddling Mage is, is fantastic. You kind of go from there. March of Otherworldly Light is really good as well. Okay, so just Forest. Deck. Yes, deck. Why? <laughs> all right, all right, deck. You are... A kind soul is going to do this, play the paladin here, because this way at least we get to draw a sweet, sweet card off of Colossus Hammer. Maybe we'll draw like Paradise Mantle. It's not a bad one. It's also not my, my favorite. Beseju? Do you have Beseju? That would make me sad. Um, And so the question is, do we need to move the hammer to the paladin? And I feel like the answer to that is no. God, I don't. Um, if we move them both to the paladin, I, I'm i cool. I'm, I'm about it. We actually probably don't have to move the shadow spear. Can probably just move that. But this does survive a double strike titan, but it doesn't. That will trade with a double strike titan. All right, opponent, what you got? I'm at 32. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape, especially with the blacksmith skill. All right. I presume they will float mana and then go get an amulet, but I could be wrong. They could go get T-West or like uh, they could go get Expedition Map to go get Teleria West and then they can tr potentially transmute Teleria West. I feel like it's amulet usually. They have seven cards in hand, so I don't know. When my opponent figures out what they're doing, I will, I'll, I'll come back. Okay, so they did decide to go with floating mana, which makes sense because they can't Make a comp. I'm sure they're thinking about some complex, but that's why. Okay, Expedition Map. Um, are they getting Besaju? Okay, Boros Garrison, but it only untaps the one time. So pretty big fan of that. All right. Being on the play was incredible this this match, obviously. Um, being on the play is step one to usually winning the amulet matchup, especially game one. But this matchup is so swingy. Usually it is. Usually it is very decisive one way or another. Sometimes you get really interesting kind of back and forth games where neither deck is functioning super well they have like a force of vigor but you're shutting off their titan lavinia things like that um and those are really interesting but most of the time it's not the most interesting matchup not every matchup needs to be super intricate interesting at least from the hammer everything just looks like a nail over here okay so they did bounce the boros garrison okay so they're playing a, okay they just had another amulet okay that's not really what i'm not gonna complain either i mean <laughs> it's a scary turn they had the double amulet without having to get one off saga that's terrible but they like definitely drew it this turn right okay uh okay opponent <laughs> so azusa and then they get to make a ton of red white mana they probably bounce the, well, they probably, I don't know. Okay, so they bounce the forest and then they go get like a, a green blue bounce land. Simic Growth Chamber. So they will be able to get and play a Titan. I don't know that they can kill us this turn. They probably can because um, they can probably just transmute like West, Dryad. Okay, I feel like this was their last land. Okay, yeah. Yep, Titan. Pretty good. Interesting. I feel incredibly dead here, but we'll see what they what they do to us. Like they should probably just transmute T West for a summoning Summoner's Pact to do, go get another Titan to Titan us again. That seems right. Um, and assuming it's actually okay, no, because the Cultivator Colossus is gonna let them pretty hard here. Okay, all right. So here's here's one billion triggers. I don't know, man. I'll uh, I'll let them resolve all these triggers and I'll come back. All right. When all is said and done, they have they had like 14 mana. So if we don't die, I will be quite shocked. So yeah, Titan attacks. They probably get what two Valakuts here. So they just have another Titan. All right, so we're probably gonna try to get games two and three. A lot of Alakut triggers. I wonder, do they have the haste land though? Because if they don't have the haste land, like I'm still okay. If they don't go get the haste land, I would be shocked if go get the haste land. I'll let them try to potentially mess up. I can hope. Okay, they went and got another Summoner's Pact. All right, all right. show me Slayer's Stronghold and I will concede. Because they could Slayer's Stronghold. Dude, really? Why are we not just getting Slayer's Stronghold? I think they're just styling on me. It doesn't matter. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Cool. I will concede to lethal damage, or what I think is. All right, so game two. Let's see if we can not get, tri like, it could have been a triple. <laughs> but let's see. Okay, so Cauldra is very good. Cauldra is very good. Esper Sentinel is pretty, pretty terrible. Memnite, also terrible. Springleaf Drum is okay. Steel Shaper's Gift, pretty medium. Um, the good cards, Lavinia and Meddling Mage, very good. March of Otherworldly Light kills Amulet and Saga, quite good. 
Blacksmith skills protect Lavinia's and Stoneforge Mystic from getting blown to pieces so they can get the cauldron. It seems correct. We can actually trim a giver instead of the Memnite because I do like that Memnite will let us uh, kind of accelerate a little bit more than the... So, uh, I'm cool with this. And let's see how it goes. The opponent had a very good hand. That's fair. I drew really well after, after the opening seven. Um, <laughs> but if I had known it was Amulet, I would have thrown that. Okay. Yes, I will be on the play. I mean, we have a turn two hammer. Uh, I will... Yeah, so we get to go turn one... Seachrome Coast Giver. I often will multi-hate in this matchup, but considering how powerful this start is, I kind of like it. All right. A Blacksmith skill would also be quite good here. Um, Don't need that. I can play Ornithopter, I guess. Play out the Spring Lake. All right. I'm going to play my cards. All right. Do you have Force of Vigor opponent? I hope you don't have Force of but I feel like you have Force I don't know. Hard to throw back a turn two hammer, <laughs> so I'm not going to sweat it. All right, goes there. And now Force of Vigor on the hammer and the aid. From here, we could still draw. Yep, okay. Pretty gross. What do they pitch? A Force of Vigor. Okay. Yes, I will equip the non-existent equipment to it. Um. So now we need to draw a hate piece or a Stoneforge Mystic, something along those lines. Uh, the fact that they also got to lead with Saga is a problem. I would take a March as well. Um, all those are good. <laughs> All right, deck. All right. I I see how it is. Probably could have cracked in for one with the giver, but feel like we're pretty dead this game. Um, that was kind of an unfortunate way for things to end, but kind of get to see the highs and the lows. Yeah, like if we hit a march, then we're obviously in really good shape because then we can just blow up the amulet, dryad in, got it. Anything else? Maybe not. Maybe we'll hit a march now. EE -E for one. At least this blacksmith skill might do something. Lavinia, all right. We're just gonna pass turn. I wish we could force the, the pop on the EE -E because that way at least it gets rid of amulet. All right, yep. And Lavinia has kind of lost her way. I believe we're pretty dead. I don't think there's a string of draws that keeps us from losing the game here, but we will see. And Besaju, honestly, that's not the card I care about. The card I care about is that they are about to haste this Titan, bounce the Besaju, and Valakut my booty. I'm ready. Okay. Mm I guess they probably need that for the correct colors of mana. I don't know. Probably got that so it would stay in place so the Valakut actually does its thing. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to mulligan that hand, but it felt really strong as long as they didn't have exactly Force of Vigor. Um, but they did, so we're dead. And that's just kind of how it works sometimes. Oh, shoot. Okay. Opponent apparently is a fan. Yeah, no problem. I'm glad I'm glad they enjoy. Well, in that case, I definitely need to uh, blacksmith skill their Titan. Cool. All right. Well, hopefully opponent gets to watch this video and they get to watch from the other side as they just wreck me. Like that was not close. Um, but yeah. So finished with a... Finished with a medium 3-2. Um, the, loss, the loss to Amiel, that's fine. I've been winning that matchup a lot recently, but I don't think you're supposed to win that matchup that often. And so, you know, it was bound to kind of swing the other way. Um, the loss to the green-white Heliod combo deck, that one felt a little worse. I, I feel like the, the draws just kind of didn't line up, but that's just kind of the nature of magic sometimes. Um, if you're three twoing every league or better, then you're doing really well, right? Like best players in the world, 60, 65% win rate about their cap. Um, and that's that's kind of what you want to see. I think people always kind of post their, their 5 O's, and, you know, obviously sometimes when I record, I get a 5 Um, But, you know, I, I hope this was entertaining. There were definitely some ridiculous moments in this, in this league. And so I hope people kind of enjoy those moments. Um, spell piercing like a turn eight or nine to fairy certainly comes to mind. That being said, um, I like the mana base a lot. We kind of saw literally the reason I don't have flooded strand in the deck anymore. And so that was pretty cool. Um, I don't mind the double blacksmith skill in the main. It's fine. I don't mind getting the extra pieces on the sideboard. Um, obviously we didn't play against any four color and that's really what you want the Hushbringers for. Against four color, you just get to go like um, these like nine cards and then you get to trim like a lot of your chaff. So I like the Hushbringers. Um, I think they're really good. I think you should play a minimum of three right now just because of how much they do. Um, we kind of saw how having this diverse hate against Living End was also really nice. Um, we mulled the four and one despite, you know, they mulled the five, but um, yeah, I really like the list. I think it's really clean. Um, I think you can absolutely play a second Seal Shapers. If you can play a third if you want over like the, the extra Blacksmith skill. Um, Mantle obviously is a little bit worse since we trimmed some of these zeros, but 
when it's good, it's so good um, that it just straight wins you the match and Drum just doesn't have that ceiling. And so I think playing one is correct, especially if you do have one or two of these Steel Shapers gift. Um, other than that, yeah, I kind of touched on the zeros at the beginning. I really like the sideboard configuration and I'm pretty happy with this list going forward. It's probably what I'm going to play in St. Louis here in what, about two weekends. Um, that being said, I might post another video before that. You guys can expect another couple, um, another couple sideboard and matchup analysis before then. Definitely the, the matchup analysis and kind of go from there. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And if you want kind of deeper dives, uh, check out the Patreon. It'll be linked in the video below. Um, and I really appreciate the support. Y'all are awesome. I'm always happy to answer questions. All right. Well, take care, y'all. Bye.